Right, so about 50 minutes into the match, and obviously you're seeing I started down that edge, um, just on soft pellets. Had a decent little run on that, I caught, um, I think I had four big F1s on that. Did actually lose a calf, which might have been foul looked. It was coming in a bit funny and I lost it. It looked a decent fish, but not to worry. Um, and then obviously my next move was to come onto my shallow line under this tree. Give it sort of 45 minutes, fed it, and I'm just having my first look. So, uh, well, I just had my first look sort of five minutes ago and I've caught two F1s on it already. Um, and I've caught a rod on it as well. So, good, good sign that there's some fish there. Just fishing, gone in on the rig about a foot deep. One thing you might see is obviously fishing with actually an overshotted float. And the main reason behind that today is because on this peg, as you can see, I've got a tree to fish up to. And to actually get me rig where I need it, it's very difficult to do with a normally shotted float. So by overshotting my float and actually pushing it under the tree, I can get right towards where them fish are hiding. And hopefully catch plenty of them. All it is, a little dibber float, my standard normal dibber what I normally use. And I've just added an extra couple of shot, another two number 10s, just so I can keep a nice direct line. And hopefully push it under the tree and when an F1 takes it, the elastic just comes straight out. It's a deadly way of catching these F1s. It's one of them methods that not everyone's cup of tea, but in this sort of situation, it's probably the only way to actually fish in this way, get the rig right in amongst the tree. So it's sort of something you must do. So went in and caught two straight away, but now I'm just sat there. So, oh, there's one. I was about to say maybe I need to just drop a tuck deeper. See, that looks like another half decent F1. Try to run me into the tree. Just gonna stop, feed a few casters, try and bring some fish back, because made quite a bit of disturbance, that fish it tried to take me towards the tree. We can see some of the size of these F1s, what I've had so far. Like, some of them I had down the edge, sort of two, two and a half pound. This one's probably again, sort of getting on for two pound. I think that'll be my seventh F1 now. Probably got 15 pounds, something like that. So not even an hour in yet, 15 pound. Target today is probably about somewhere in the region of 100, 120 pounds. So obviously I expect it to get better late on. Hopefully late on catching the edge really well, maybe some better carp. So I think 15 pound at just under an hour is probably a really good start to the match. So, just persevering with this, just a little banded caster on a size 16 Super LWG. And like I say, just pushing it right into the back of the tree there. Just holding it up, lowering it in nice and slow. Every now and again, give it a couple of taps. Lift and drop the rig. It's one thing that works really well when you're fishing with this overshotted flow, it's just lifting and letting the bait fall back down. Sometimes it can ob almost be the case where you're best off to keep the hook bait on the move almost constantly. I feel like bait that's sat static below your pole tip is very unnatural to the fish, so keep, keep it on the move. Keep sort of lifting your float back up. You should keep catching now. Just up one there again then. Oh, might have been foul up that. It sort of swam out my peg really funny then. Just wrap me rig round my pole tip. Oh, I don't know if you've seen that then, the way that swam out the peg. I think another F1 also spooked off with it as well. So you tell there is a few fish sat there under that cover. Keep loose feeding your casters. Just going through the motions and all I'm gonna keep doing now while I'm fishing this line, every sort of 20 minutes, half an hour, 
I'm going to look at feeding my edge, feeding some ground bait and micro pellets there just to keep that going. And then keep feeding my mud line. But one thing I would say, my mud line's not a million miles away from where I'm fishing shallow here. So this shallow line's really good. Save sort of splitting my fish up. I might even stop feeding that. I can always feed it again later on. If I feel like I need to catch some carp. But in the meanwhile, this looks like a good sign that there's a few decent fish here. Looks like another good stamp fish this does now, so. Another nice F1. And these are proper weight building fish, like catch them steady away all day. You can't have put a weight in your net quickly and like I know what partridge can be like. There's a lot of them in your peg all the time and it can be so tricky to catch, so it's a good sign that I'm getting some bites off him so early. Just going to plod along with this. Probably have to rotate the depth a bit. I've got some rigs sort of set up from sort of eight inch deep down to sort of eighteen inch. It's only probably around, probably around three and a half foot where I'm fishing. So covered up to sort of half depth, and we'll just see how we get on. There's another fish up on the Castellella, so. Really good start to the day. Catch up with you in a bit if it changes.